my dear doctor joy philip principal suti medical college other distinguished faculty at the college dear friends colleagues distinguished guests the most important people of the day the young graduates i'm really honored to be here with you all during the convocation ceremony it's a proud uh, privilege for me first of all let me congratulate the young graduates for having chosen medical profession it is probably not probably it is the noblest profession of all professions you have the greatest opportunity to serve humanity especially they, when they are ill and also in preventing them from illness when they are will well as you know you are kind words a smile soft touch compassion empathy that at goes a long way and you can do wonders probably more wonders than pills and injections this is something which you have to carry home but it is uh, very important for you to, for you to be competent you may be fortunate to become a doctor probably a prestigious position in the society as we think today things are going to change later probably let me warn you don't take it for granted you will have to prove yourself that you are worthy of the profession please understand that you have started just budding to blossom and spread fragrance will take uh, several years you have to spread the fragrance of love affection fragrance of uh, commitment and uh, conviction and so on with all good wishes from the bottom of my heart let me present to you some messages which i have learned over the years during the long journey of my surgical career i thought it is there is no point in giving an estimate speech and uh, going away you may not carry most of the messages you want to really carry so i thought i'll make it in a presentation farm we are very much used to isn't it it is not a political talk it is something you have to carry home that is what i am trying to um expose yes, uh here through my few slides actually it might take uh, about half an hour i hope you must be patient enough, enough to listen to me I swear by Apollo the physician and Asclepius and Hygeia and Panacea and all the gods and goddesses making them my witnesses that I will fulfill according to my ability and judgment this oath and covenant So begins one version of the Hippocratic oath that lays down Please duties set, set. social and professional for doctors all over the world Very little is known of Hippocrates Born on the island of Kos in Aegean, Greek medicine before him was mostly magic and superstition. His contribution is primarily thought to be his insistence on the study of symptomatology, which even today helps the physician to recognize and treat diseases that show the same symptoms. 
According to some researchers, it remains to be explained whether the substance of the oath was borrowed by Greece from India or vice versa. Friends, uh, this is one of the statues we have in late uh, Lord's Hospital, in front of the Lord's Hospital. Probably this is the only statue, probably all over the world if you search, except uh, Brisbane, they have a half sp statue. I have a printout of the Hippocratic Oath, actually, where you see the statue of Hippocrates is the one we, you see in Lord's Hospital. Santosh, would you kindly distribute those to the graduates? And I have a copy of that, actually. You must carry it home. Santosh, uh, my, uh, can you please k distribute it, actually? I thought you would have done it already. Also to the faculty, kindly. It will take a couple of minutes. It is not awkward, but uh, it is something which is worthwhile carrying home. This is what you have to do every morning before you start, your, start off your work. That is what, what I believe in. That is what I want to tell you, actually. There is definitely a deterioration in the quality, the sincerity, commitment, conviction among uh, the doctors. That, is, that should not affect you. And this is obviously, and um, about Hippocrates, he is the father of medicine. He lived in the 400 BC. And uh, his uh, medical ethics, even after 25 years, that uh, nobody could change even a word from that, actually. The, give it to the dice, a uh, couple of them. Can you, can you give a couple of them to the dice? Uh, Dr. Joey Philip and uh, It's very, really informal. Don't take it very formal. But uh, this is made for you. And um, you know Florence Nightingale, obviously. I don't have to tell about uh, Florence Nightingale. She was born in a very rich family, but uh, she dedicated her entire life for the uh, ailing uh, Crimean war soldiers, actually, and she never got married. And she lived for 90 years, and those people live longer than others. And when she died, uh, mother, same year, Mother Teresa was born on the same year, 19, um, 1910, I think, yes, 19,010, August uh, 13th, she died, same month, uh, Mother Teresa was born. Next, uh, please. These are two photographs I keep in my office room behind me, actually. Why? Because somebody asked me, why you keep these photos? I said, uh, Gandhiji, he, g he gave us freedom on land, and uh, APJ gave us freedom in the sky. That's the reason. These are the only two photos I keep in my room. And today I do not know actually how many people remember Gandhiji. And uh, there is a joke I do not know. You might have probably heard somebody asked who is the son of uh, the father of na the nation, uh, Gandhiji. Somebody said uh, his son is uh, the nation, father of the nation who is uh, the son of Gandhiji, they said, uh, the nation, because they have heard he is the father of the nation. That's the way we will remember. Einstein once told, uh, many people may not remember after 50 years, there was a man lived in, uh, lived in India and lived on earth. That is about Gandhiji. These are the two, two photos I keep. Uh, in my room, probably Dr. Joey Philip had seen that one. Next one, yeah. It, this is very important to develop a personality. What is personality? I don't have to tell you. You can probably refer your Oxford Dictionary that will uh, tell you what is personality. It is not the beauty. It's a personality. The way we behave, talk, your body language, so many things. So. So many things uh, contribute uh, in developing personality. 
the, the podium is a little inconvenient for me, actually. It is slanting, sloppy. I cannot keep anything. Sorry about it. And um, you can see that, isn't it? You are the creator of your destiny. Very important to remember. What are the prerequisites to develop? This is mainly for the young graduates you must uh, listen to. I'm a teacher, so I'll be like uh, speaking to you like a teacher. Next, please. This is very important. Uh, we don't have a dress code today. The casualty medical officer and lords, I find on certain days, wearing a blue jeans, actually. Jeans, one of the problem. Most of them uh, wearing jeans, they have a hemorrhoids problem, because of, probably because of the heat, I suppose. And this is not uh, washed properly. This is probably they wash in one, uh, once in three months or so. And uh, also, some dark check shirts and a low waist with a belt uh, hanging. That is awkward, isn't it? A medical officer sitting in the OP saying, the public must respect you. How do they respect you? Your presentation first. How do you present yourself? This is very important whether you can wear all those things in the evening when you go to the club, or cinema, or whatever. But this is very important, your dress code. Make sure you do that. Next, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, I've said that. Present yourself very impressively. That's very important, your body language. Next, please. Body language is probably the oldest language and the most effective language. You can convey a lot of messages. And um, we don't know anything about body language. Gestures give the true intention. You can read attitudes and emotions. You know when you say palm down, authority. Palm up, submission. Pointing, that's wrong. Lot of people talk pointing. Ah, this is to show you some of the attitudes, you know. The siding, she's lying, he's hostile, closed mind. You see, look at those actually. You can get uh, some books on body languages. This is very important for you people to know actually how to behave when they come in receiving kindly, please. Profusely you can use those words. Next please. I don't want to take, I am rushing through the slides also. And uh, my Lord, uh, this is my concept, how Lord's Hospital came to my mind. It is not the Lord's I wanted to come there. It is not me, I am the Lord. It is my patient who is the Lord. That must be your concept. My Lord is my patient. Without them, you have no existence. You are client consumer, yeah. And uh, you must be smiling. You have a negative attitude. You might be talking to somebody else when they come in. That is what I find, mostly. That should not happen with you people who are going to graduate from today from the SUT. Smiling, positive, you, have, you can be very gentle, very soft. Be confident. If you are not confident, how do they come to you next time? You have to behave yourself, you are confident. Not to worry about. Create confidence in them, they wouldn't worry. I can give you an example. I've seen patients coming to me for many thyroid surgeries. That's one of my masterpiece surgeries, if you want to know. If you want to watch, you have to, believe, you have to watch to believe. My blood loss in a total thyroidectomy would be something like 2 to 3 ml of blood. I use only bipolar dissection forceps. In the past, we had uh, artery forceps, ligatures, and so on. But we don't need any one of those with the modern energy gadgets. That is all. You can come and watch or you can ask. I never like scars. I'll come to that later on. Why? So somebody with a papillary carcinoma come to you actually for... Somebody might have frightened them. They come to you trembling. And uh, I don't use the word cancer. I tell them when they examined, there are some changes in the cells. Some cells are not very normal, not very typical. It is better you get it removed. You will live like me or like him and you are completely cured. At the same time, you know the, uh, 
thyroid cancers you have the you can have the most brutal carcinoma also the anaplastic carcinoma of the thyroid you will not live longer than 2 years but papillary if you did a total thyroidectomy if you put them on a high dose of uh, thyroxin 200 microgram uh, 250 microgram they live normally except in 5% of cases the tall cell variety the surgeons will understand I'm sure. So you have the least malignant and the most malignant, but you cannot afford to frighten them saying that this is a cancer. Never use the word cancer if you can. That must be removed from the textbook. That's the way I look at uh, medical practice. Because as soon as you hear the word cancer, you get frightened. But this cancer, if you remove the thyroid completely, they live longer. Only thing is, you have to protect the parathyroids and the recurrent laryngeal, that needs uh, skill, that needs talent, the surgeon needs talent, creative, like uh, an artist. That is, surgery is a blend of art and science. Next slide, I just, sorry, before that, previous slide, I want to tell you, you have to pace, I don't know whether you can s s see that actually. When you t talk, I'm not uh, pacing, you have to pace, don't continuously pace for them to understand. And your pitch, low pitch, high pitch, obviously in music also, you know. And the tone is very important when you talk to them, isn't it? This is very important for you to remember. Principles of communication, you have to develop uh, the communication skill. This is most important. You, uh, you have to be a good listener first. Everyone, People are interested only in their own problem. They don't worry about, you know, in the OP, when I see a patient, the one who has come in, you, they want uh, you to spend half an hour for them. And we can't afford, there will be a lot of people waiting also. You don't need half an hour. How many minutes you need for a hernia, you ask the patient to stand and cough once, you can see. That's it. How many seconds? Five seconds. Then what you are talking about, you ask them, whether you are a diabetic, hypertensive, have you had any angina, are you allergic, have you had any previous operation, that's all finished. How many minutes you need? You need probably one minute. And if you have an assistant, he'll know down. Then you have plenty of time so that the patient's waiting will not uh, offend you. They will not be unhappy. Make sure you do that actually. And shake hands, smile at them, get up and uh, show some respect. If an elderly person, when they come in, give a shake hand kindly. Would you kindly take a seat, sir? Why not? Nothing. You don't lose anything by saying sir to somebody, isn't it? If you respect, they respect you. Identify the listener, his state of mind. This is very important. Just observe his state of mind. The way you look at the eyes and talk to them. None of the doctors look at the face and uh, look at the eyes and talk to them, they'll be convinced. None of them do that, actually. I'm sure Dr. Subhash Chandu will be looking only at the eyes. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> One of the fantastic physicians uh, we had in the medical college, he was so brilliant. Dr. Joy Philip, I'm so happy to be that you are one of his uh, students. You must be lucky to have him as the principal and teacher, one of the fantastic teachers. <clears throat> the purpose behind your talk, you mustn't talk nonsense. What is the purpose of your talk? Timekeeping is very important. Stress on those points which are important. And use the term, please, thank you, sorry, whatever you want to say like that, actually, profusely. Why do you hesitate? Are you, are you, uh, why, why you become um, so much limited? Uh, my surly about using those uh, words of, uh, thank you, sir. I'm sorry about it. Excuse me. And uh, I'm sorry. I'll see you first. Can you hold on? This gen gentleman will have to go to the office. That's a child. This is an old man. He cannot sit. He's having severe pain. Would you kindly wait? They will wait, but you never communicate. You, this is very important. Don't keep your minds closed. Keep your minds open. Otherwise, you will not. If you want, I can give a copy of all this. And go through the um, 
Hippocratic oath, uh, you, you go through it, uh, you will sense it actually, it's so beautiful. Next slide, don't uh, bear any grudge, suppose uh, you have some grudge against somebody, when they come to you as a patient, never bear any grudge. No one is indispensable. I may be the surgeon at Lord's, I may be the chairman, managing director, I'm not very dispensable. Everybody is equally important. That is something which you have to realize. Most of us don't uh, realize that. A life is so short. Why you say life is so short? The poets say life is so short. Suppose you are living up to the age of 80 years old. 80 years. And 40 years gone as nights, isn't it? Nights you sleep. And you have only 40 years left. Till you are 20, you are very young. Then hardly you get 20 years to leave. That is why people say life is short. Don't sit. You have no time to sit. You have to be on your toes. I'm very fast even at this age. I'm faster than anybody in my hospital. There's no doubt about it. You can check with anybody. This is important. You have to see, it is not the, it is not the body. It is the mind wakes you up in the morning. It is not the body. Body is sleeping. Minds wake you up. Body has nothing. 70% of the body is water. 25% only really is solid. If you put uh, the value for the remaining solid part of uh, the body, that will cost you something like uh, 500 rupees. So body is only a shell. That has nothing to do. It's a mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the soul. This is beyond there is something. There is uh, a light. That is, we call it as Ishwara. Ishwara means, you know, Ra means Chuda, Sha means Shasam, and uh, E means Icha, Chindagal. Chudam, Shasavam, Namra Chindagal, Nalanarthanavan, Ishwaran. Adich Adhani Saidanim, Yenana Mansilaka. That's what I'm telling you. It's your mind that uh, keeps you awake, wake you up in the morning. It is not the body. Body is uh, dead. So you live only short time, 20 years. Those who live up to the age of 70, 80 years, they live only 20 years. So life is very short. You have no time to rest. Most of people rest, isn't it? The time they spent out of the 20 years is probably 5 years, 20 percent. 20%. Don't over-exaggerate things. When you operate, don't try to say that I am an eminent surgeon. Nobody else can do like I do. I never do that, but I say that what I can do, what I can do. I am very definite about what I can do, what I can't do. <clears throat> A lot of, uh, lots of successful people did not even have their basic education. You know that, isn't it? We, we don't have time to elaborate on those areas. Next sl slide. Medical ethics, you know, the, the second para stanza in that if you read, how you regard, regard my teacher in this art as equal to my parents. Do you consider your teachers at all? There is a big gap now. You don't know, listen to your teachers and vice versa. Best teachers make best students and vice versa. Great teachers make uh, great uh, students and vice versa. Great students inspire their teachers. And to make him partner in my livelihood, and when he is in need of money to share mine with uh, him, to consider his offspring equal to my brothers, to teach, him, teach uh, them this art, if they require to learn it without fee or uh, indenture, and to impart precept, oral instruction and all of the learning to my sons, to the sons of my teacher and to the peoples who have signed the indenture and so on, obedience to the physician's law, but to none other. So you read this uh, repeatedly every morning for the next uh, few years that will go into the, not into the minds, into the hearts, into your soul, even beyond. This is very important. Next, please. Successful doctor, how do they make successful? From tomorrow, I want to be successful. That is not possible. Medical profession do not demand more than common sense. 
I used to tell many students when they come and ask me, if you are very intelligent, you don't go for medicine. Medicine do not uh, warrant more than common sense. But uh, you need something else. Not your IQ, intellectual coefficient, but you need emotional coefficient, EQ more than IQ. That is what you need. Your strong conviction, total commitment, passion for your work. In surgery, you need not only passion, you have to have obsession. That is what I believe. And think, uh, what makes you different? We will see that now. Sorry. Previous slide, please. Think different. Attitude. Next slide, please. This is Obama. Look at him. He is raising his hand like this. That is his own brother, George Obama. He is in Kenya. He is living in Islam. His breakfast, he start off with uh, alcohol in the morning and uh, some rotten bread. See the comparison? His own brother. One is number one in the world. That's the attitude. The uh, next, please. From zero to hero. Yeah. And uh, you know, try to do the best till last. And uh, no fear of failure, but in our place now, you are trying to save yourself. You are not trying to save uh, the patient sometimes because you are. Fear of failure, that should not happen with you. See, this is Christian Bernard. You know who is Christian Bernard? You know Christian Bernard? The graduates? He is the transplant, heart transplant surgeon. He did the first heart transplant in 1967. 50 years ago, he is a South African. He is no more, he died in Cyprus, vacationing. In the end, he developed a rheumatoid arthritis. He couldn't have it. Why I brought him this? I tell you. And um, his first patient lived only nine, 19 days. Second patient lived nearly two years. And now, all of the, you know, the first transplant in Kerala, you know when? That was in July, last July. Few months ago, roughly hardly six months ago, first transplant. The transplant on Matthew Acharan. The donor was Vasudeva Sharma. So Matthew Acharan's heart is from Vasudeva Sharma. The surgeon operated is Joe in Cochin. I asked you one question. Now, Matthew Charan carries the heart of Vasudeva Sarma. Should he go to the church or to the temple? Now, Matthew Charan carrying Vasudeva Sarma's heart. Can you tell me his religion? There are a lot of religious people here. Can anyone of you tell, give me the answer? That's a question. I ask several people, nobody can answer. Anyway. That is in between. So just remember, this is to quote one of his uh, quotes actually, Christian Bernard. See, yeah, suppose uh, a lion is chasing you to the liver, lion is chasing you to the liver, full of crocodiles, what will you do? You can only leap into the water, hoping that you can swim across. And uh, probably save your life. There is no alternative. Take the chance. This is what I want to convey. That's one of his course. Lion is chasing you to the river, full of crocodiles. What will you do? You can only leap into the water and swim across if you are lucky you are saved. This is important for you to remember. I don't know how much I uh, remember. That's my please. This is uh, about the, an idea can change life, isn't it? 
But the spelling must be correct actually. When they type the idea can change life uh, instead of uh, L, it came as something, it was typing was and there was an error of an alphabet. Instead of L, it was W. So that book was sold uh, millions. Idea can change. I don't think you got a W. Instead of L, it uh, was type Y. So that uh, book was sold millions and two days. So in a way, it was, in, you know the Brooklyn Bridge, one of the longest suspension bridge made in the last uh, uh, US, the end of the 19th century. And uh, John Browning was an excellent uh, innovative engineer, dreaming all the time in UG. And his son, uh, Washington Browning, and uh, Washington's wife, Emily. And uh, this idea came to his mind at the top. Thing is, John Rowling was an uh, amazing engineer, very talented uh, industry engineer. He had a dream, he had an idea of uh, a suspension bridge across the long land actually from Brooklyn to New York. And nobody could uh, digest that idea. They thought it is stupid, it's foolish, and he mustn't do that. But eventually he could convince his target. During the work, he fell down and died. Six months, two days, six months. John uh, Rowling, he died. Then they thought he really stopped. The project is going to be lost. They will discuss in the project. But his son was a student, a engineer at that time. He qualified. He was the only inspiration for his father. He said, I'm not going to stop. I'll continue and I'll complete. I'll fulfill my father's uh, uh, dream. And uh, he wanted to continue. And uh, unlike uh, such again, during the course, in the, he developed a decompression sickness. You have to remove water. He was in a decompression chamber. He developed paralysis. He was also injured after some time. See, you get the faith. So you can fight even the faith. That is what it shows. You can fight even the faith. And then what he did was, he could move only one finger. He developed a cord. He told his wife, communicated with one finger. After developing a cord to communicate with her, his wife carried his instructions to the engineers. They completed, uh, completed the Brooklyn Bridge. This shows a true story of uh, an inspiration, inspiration story. How determination can uh, take you to heights and you can complete. Never give up. Nothing is impossible. Say never give up. Always say never give up. And nothing is impossible. Now I'm going to tell you my story. I'm not a first rank holder. I didn't even get first class in my MBBS. And now a lot of people get first class. I didn't, uh, I lost six months, I didn't uh, do the anatomy examination because I had a low average. With 40 marks you can update the average now, they get 80% average, 100%, if not 101%. It's easy. Every student joining pass out. You need only 10 marks for the entrance to join an engineering college. You know the position of the engineering colleges? And we have 134 engineering colleges in our state, and many of them are having lots of seats vacant, 20, 25, 25,000 seats vacant. That should not happen to the medical colleges. This is not a business. This is for a service. That is something which you have to realize by the way. And uh, so I was, I would say I was only really mediocre. I didn't do, do anatomy, I thought uh, I may lose, then uh, I didn't tell anybody, I didn't go for the anatomy. But as I said, I need anatomy more than anybody else. 
but I really do know anatomy very well. I dissect out the Paratara, I will see the Paratara, I dissect the rectal potential when I do the Kodutara. So you don't have to be a first rank holder or a, a 90, scoring 95 percent to be successful. You decide what you want to do. How do you become successful? You are dreamy, you have to have some dreams. Not some dreams, not to dreams. And uh, not uh, a child in your day. And uh, everything always highlights dreams. And your commitment, your perseverance, most important. Curiosity is good, okay? Joy is always such a thing. You people today, I, I don't know when they have that sort of curiosity, how do I learn that? That is something which I highlight a day. Ambitious. My uh, surgical aspiration to surgery was inspired by one of the legends of that time in the early 60s, 70s, 80s. The one was uh, Dr. Susan George. She's one of the legends of that time. She went to England, marvelous personality. And I was assisting her for a pelvic lymphadenectomy. Along with uh, two other senior people, one assistant professor, Dr. Samadhan Basa, that time is uh, doing his MD in uh, gynecology. I was the third assistant, Mahu IT as third assistant. The main job was cutting the suture with scissors, that is your job. And uh, that time he didn't have any uh, harmonic scans for the ligash or none of the energy gadgets which, uh, which uh, coagulate blood vessels. And uh, you have to cut with, tie with uh, linen, silk, or cotton threads, and uh, you'll be having so many uh, ligature cuts actually. I was uh, doing the cutting and I was supporting. And she made a remark during surgery, Dr. Seems, young fellow, she said that. She didn't know the name. And uh, she compared to her a small block descendant, the house surgeon. I was a house surgeon then in 67. She is a big better post and the buck. And she was uh, commenting. She made a remark, young fellow, you have a knack for surgery. See, she must take a surgery. That goes into the heart, not into the heart, beyond that. That is all. Then my inspiration. I had the, probably the figure works was fairly good. And then more or less ambidextrous, I can do with both hands. Right and left, more or less equally. Today I need more than ever before because I do the laparoscopic surgery, the minimal access surgery where you need both hands equally ambidextrous. So then it was Dr. Jason and he was very temperamental, very very, very angry, looking and uh, reacting person, very hot tempered, very short tempered person. And this is senior people must remember, might remember him. And he was again a good surgeon at that time. That doesn't mean actually you have to realize they were all cap captains of that time. But uh, that uh, may not uh, mean that uh, they could have been doing by, by, like what uh, an extra do today, things as a man. You know the existing uh, postgraduate selection, you do a common entrance, isn't it? After a few years, you do a common entrance. For surgeons, for physicians, for pediatricians, for gynecologists, you have a common entrance. Suppose I want to do only surgery, why should I answer a dermatology question? Fair enough, you have some knowledge of uh, dermatology, have you qualified as a graduate, a BBS? That's enough. If I want to do surgery, I must write only a surgery and allied specialty. Medicine for a physician, medicine, allied specialty. Gynecologist, gynecology, allied specialist. Otherwise, you know what happened? You will not get good surgeon. Somebody who wants to become a dermatologist, when the ranking comes, he gets into surgery. Just imagine a dermatologist, Dr. Yogi is operating on him. He, he might not have any interest. This is what happened today. We don't have surgeons because surgeon must be determined. I can do only surgery. That is what I am. 
I would have been able to do any other specialty I would have. If you are calling these to senior colleagues and faculty, let me confess that I can do only surgery. I could have been doing anything else. That is the way. That is the way it should be. Those who want me to surgery, they must do only surgery. That's the way it is. For me, at least. Whether you make me unhappy, it is not my problem, your problem. And uh, I'm telling you, what uh, And uh, this is the problem with your government. Choosing a career, how do you choose? This is very important for all these people. How do you choose a career? First of all, find out why you will choose a particular specialty. What is your interest? You want to rest seven dollars structurally, 40 hours a week, a certain bucks, 160 hours a week. Certain cannot work in within a time frame. You must be prepared. So ladies might not take surgery because of that reason I don't blame them. When they say facts, truth, they don't they don't take it. And why do you choose a particular find out? Find out that you want the right person to do that specialty. And make a professional assessor. If somebody wants to choose something, say that they say any other, come to me and get one of them, then you ten minutes. You are the right person, you are not the right person. So this is something you have to have a professional assessor. A surgeon, I tell you, being a surgeon, I tell you about my specialty. Yeah, how a surgeon should be, those who want to become a surgeon. He must definitely have an artistic talent, just like a painter, just like uh, somebody who can draw an artist. Like, not, you may not be Michelangelo or Da Vinci, but uh, you, you have to have some art traffic in you. And you have to be creative and innovative. And uh, dexterity is important, precision, you have to be a precision worker, then only. 95% of my surgery is today are minimal exercise, minimally invasive surgery. We do bariatric surgery, mini gastric bypass, sleeve gastrectomy, metabolic surgery, RSA for varicose veins, staple surgery for bites. And you know, for fistula, not many people know, including surgeons, that uh, there is a procedure called uh, Wow, for fistula. Fistula also there is an endoscopic procedure which I knew in laws. And uh, BDO assisted anal fistula treatment for your information. At least remember these names. There are innovative, minimal access procedure, minimally invasive procedures available. Plenty today. And you must be prepared to name. You have to be ambidextrous. You have to use both hands. Why is surgery? Because it is really challenging. You have to have some challenge. Like challenges. Usually the high sales well paid actually and uh, rewarding career and uh, in the best if you take, go, you find that is one of the most short specialty, very difficult to get into. And I'm sure of uh, a revealed in my surgery, I do not know whether you are in America or you are in England. This is a case, it's not easy to get into surgery. Most of the specialty. But uh, you know, Along with that, you have a lot of hardships. Surgeons cannot go work within it. They cannot go for a film. And one of my students uh, who came from, he qualified from Russia, and one from Bangalore, two of them came to watch me surgery, and both of them are doing MS after paying a crore of rupees in the NFA Medical College. And uh, one of them got married about a year ago. And a uh, few days ago, I got a call, Sarra. He married a doctor, young, beautiful girl, uh, fairly wealthy and all that. He's a handsome fellow, very hardworking. And uh, uh, they got divorced. Uh, to my shock, actually, that's the message I got from him. He said, Sarra, I couldn't. And she also said that you are not, he's not available. He's always in the hospital. He cannot take her for a film. He cannot uh, take her to the tourist centre, they cannot go to the um, seashore and all that for enjoying. Today people want a 9 to 1 job, I trust that the time is for their enjoyment and their families enjoyment. That will not do for a doctor. If you want, you have to spend time, you have to have commitment. You have to be a warm personality, whether you are a physician or surgeon. This is very important. Ethical approach, I have given you the ethics. 
of what it is all about, you read it. I think they are true. And we must be humble. That is something which uh, we lose. And especially people in Kerala are not humble. They are not a video, they are rude, they are not a video to Bangalore. People come from the North, I, oper I operate on people from Karnataka actions. I recently one of the film actors called Takesh, is not correct telling the name, came for a weight loss surgery. He was very happy. Fourth day, fourth day he went through. And two days after I rang him for how you are Takesh, he says, I feel like jumping. He was very obese, she is a very popular actor in Canada. She is old, they come and touch your feet. I don't believe actually. And they will not be sure so that they are not going to be able to do it. And they are going to be able to do it. But they are going to be able to do it. But you can't say no sometimes. Your student comes, your nurse comes before getting married. And they, this is a practice for them. Just like you go in front of the candle and brush it. In front of the, in front of Jesus, you are such a, they touch your feet. Sometimes you have to access also. They do that, they have no ego. But for a Malayali doctor, will never ever do that, even to their parents. And this uh, is analysis. This is, you have to analyze yourself, did I do the right thing, am I right? This is very important for any doctor, for the doctor. If you get a cut from the lava, actually, find out whether I am doing the right thing, never do that. And uh, never ever do that. Even if you have a family star on one knee, it doesn't matter. You don't really need several meals. You need only half of what you are eating now to sustain or even do more. If you eat less, you can do more. So people ask me, sir, where do you get the energy? Because I eat less and work more. That's my energy. And uh, curiosity to know more and more. And Sarah needs a lot of courage in a crisis. Suppose he has a lot of problems or something, he's in the middle of the night after having had a stressful day. He comes back, he has uh, to deal with a liver injury, a splenic injury. And under crisis, he must be able to perform equally well, and well as if he was not in any crisis. So this is very important for the surgeon. So when you choose a specialty, I think most of them are done and sleeping, I do not know. I'm only just to wake you up actually, these comments come. Now, okay. And problems take many years. See, surgery takes many years. Here, as soon as you get your MS, this is the only state or country where you are given a degree called MS degree. That is a master of surgery. Nobody ever becomes a master. I am not a master of surgery. There is only one master. And master is voice, if you remember. Master is voice and there is only one master. That is one mistake in the... In England, they give a fellowship. You are a fellow. You have a license to practice. You excel. You show us how, how brilliant, how, how, how confident, how creative, how innovative you are. This is very important. So, crash of perfection needs several years. In surgery, it needs 4,000 years, nearly 10 years. And 4,000 years is calculated, it will easily go for 4 years. As soon as you pass out, you don't know anything. That's only a license. Never assume that uh, you got too much, you are the master, you are not the master. You are only a learning, surely learning license. In surgery, I'm sure. And uh, you need a high level of commitment and dedication. You need to update with your technique, skill sets. And how do you get uh, this information? Today is very easy from the internet, CMA's conferences. You are seeing your colleagues like uh, Professor Joy Philip, uh, Chan, uh, other senior doctors, Dr. Vindu Nalanda are brilliant. There are lots of years of uh, experience. And they have seen through these uh, specialties, ask them. Certainly there is a decline in interest. Students need career in surgery cuts deeper than scalpel. That's the way they look at surgery. And uh, do we have any role model today? We don't. In the past we had. We had Professor Akhavaj and Professor Sikhet and and so on and uh, so forth. Amazing personalities, which we don't see. 
today. Today, the student teacher finished his battle verse. And we thank you to all of us, that's what we need. Teachers must update and command respect. Good teacher, he said, is respected all days. Dr. Jalil Bhur in public speaking and knowledge developed those qualities. Never ever run after money, develop skills and qualities as a person. Money will chase you. Respect your teacher. Mata Pita Guru Deva, even before that, uh, I would say. Take advice, they will not charge you. Teachers have their long lasting impact on their students. Great teachers make great students and vice versa. Best students inspire their teachers too. Mind the doctor, the attitude is the key. Unconditional love, empathy, compassion. Please don't use jargon, they don't understand. Never call them, frighten them, not use the word cancer. Tell them, believe you are worried with me, actually. Not it is anymore, you are worried. It is my worry. I am responsible. I take it. And uh, I am sorry. Uh, you don't have a time for yourself. Uh, it is, uh, it, you don't uh, have time for yourself. It is their time. I tell them, I borrow their time. I don't have time for myself. Actually. It is their time. I borrow their time. But you can do everything within the available time that you can be managing time. And while you are operating, you are meditating also. If you are enjoying your operation, you are meditating also. While you are operating. You are committed to this uh, profession. No one asks you to do medicine. It was your choice. Accept it. That's the way life is all about. Thank you, that awareness. It goes on and on and on.